This is 21st Century Reformation at 21stcr.org. I'd like to title this uh, lesson this morning, The Origin of the Trinity. Because everything in the world has an origin. There's only one entity that is unoriginated, and that is God, God the Father. He had no beginning, no ending. He's unoriginated. He's underived. That's a good word. He's underived. Our Lord Jesus Christ, awesome as he is, had a beginning. Let's let him tell it. In Revelation 3.14, he said, I am the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. The word beginning there is arche in the Greek, and it means a commencement, to commence. First in order of time. So Jesus is the, he said, the beginning of the creation of God. And then the apostle Paul backed it up in case it needed to be backed up in anybody's mind. He says in Colossians 1.15 that Jesus is the firstborn of every creature. Amen? Amen? So the Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, is the only one unoriginated. Everything and everybody that we know or see has an origin. I am told by Trinitarian scholars again and again as I'm studying their writings that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in the Bible. Somebody say wow. Wow. <laughs> I mean over two billion Christians in the world today hold on tenaciously to the doctrine of the Trinity to the extent that many of them will unchristianize you if you don't also hold to the doctrine of the Trinity. But Trinitarian scholars themselves, noted Trinitarian scholars, not liberals, I mean fundamental Trinitarian scholars tell us in their writings that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in the Bible. Listen to Charles Ryrie and he has a book called Basic Theology which is used in fundamentalist Christian Bible colleges as a resource book and this is what he says Trinity of course is not a biblical word. Neither are triunity triune, trinal, substance, nor essence. Furthermore, this is a doctrine that is not explicit in the New Testament, even though it is often said that it is implicit, implied. By the way, I hear a read where Trinitarian scholars say that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in the Bible, but it's implied, it's suggested, it's hinted, is God a God that hints? No. No. Is he a God of suggestions? No. Are the Ten Commandments in reality ten suggestions? No. no. If there was a Trinity, Jesus, our Savior, would have told us plainly in more than one verse. Amen. 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 So he said many say that it is uh, implicit or implied in the Old Testament and explicit in the New but Ryrie says, explicit means characterized by full, clear expression. An adjective hard to apply to this doctrine. That's on page 58. He says, it is fair to say that the Bible does not clearly teach the doctrine of the Trinity. Amen. If by clear one means that there are proof texts for the doctrine. In fact, there is not even one proof text. End of quote. And that's on page 89. So Charles Ryrie, a noted Trinitarian scholar, is telling us without ambiguity, the doctrine of the Trinity is not in the Bible. Listen to Millard Erickson, 
who is a Baptist theologian at Southwestern Bible Institute in Waco, Texas. He said, we see the doctrine of the Trinity being developed layer by layer. It is unlikely that any text of Scripture can be shown to teach the doctrine of the Trinity in a clear, direct, and unmistakable fashion. He says, we are not coming to the text of the Old Testament with the expectation of finding the doctrine of the Trinity taught therein. We will not even find a full-fledged and explicit Trinity doctrine within the New Testament. That's right. Thank you, brother. Amen. There we go. <laughs> Trinitarian scholar, Methodist minister, Adam Clark, in Adam Clark's commentary on the Bible, an authoritative commentary on the Bible, here's, here's his shocking statement. He said, Here I trust I may be permitted to say, with all due respect for those who differ from me, that the doctrine of the eternal sonship of, the, of Christ is, in my opinion, anti-scriptural and highly dangerous. Amen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's not Joel now, that's Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, where's that at? That is on page 854 in Adam Clark's commentary okay. on the Bible. I've got that. All right. James Hastings, another Trinitarian scholar in Hastings' Dictionary of the Bible, he says, it may be that St. Paul nowhere names Christ God and verses that infer it must be otherwise explained. Hastings calls this one of the most baffling problems of New Testament theology. Wow. Page 709. So, I'll take their word for it. Yeah. If, <laughs> if these men say it, expect Joel Hemphill to say it every time you see it. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So let's just settle it. It is not a biblical doctrine. What, what does the Bible say about God? There are 31,000 verses in the Holy Bible and not one of these verses has the words two or three next to God. How many knows that the God of the Bible is one? one. Sixty-seven times I found where it says God is one. Amen. There are over 10,000 singular pronouns and verbs referring to the one God in the Bible. I, me, he, him. Never they, them. If 10,000 witnesses in the Bible wouldn't convince somebody that God is one, there's hardly any way to do it with language. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. Jesus spoke 1,865 verses in the New Testament. And in not one of those verses did he claim or even hint that he is God, That's right. the second God, God incarnate in flesh, or that he and God the Father are one person. Amen. I counted these the other day for myself. You can do the same. But Jesus said God 184 times in the New Testament from... Matthew, through Revelation, Jesus spoke much in the book of Revelation after his ascension to the Father. He said God 184 times and not once was he speaking of himself or the Holy Spirit. It was always the Father. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hello? Amen, bro. I'm a little slow, but that tells me something. The New Testament says God over 1,300 times when it is clearly speaking of the Father, not Jesus. Paul said God 513 times in his 13 epistles and not once can it be proven that he was speaking of Jesus Messiah, 
It was always the Father. Amen. Peter said God 46 times in his two epistles, and not once was he referring to Jesus. It was always the Father. Amen. James, the half-brother of Jesus, through their mother Mary, said God 17 times. You can check this in a few minutes. 17 times in his epistle and not once was he referring to Jesus it was always the Father of course the focus of my book that I wrote is not who Jesus is not it's who God the Father is Amen. Amen. Jesus is all that the Bible says he is Amen. but the problem is that we in our sincere desire to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ have given him a place in our hearts, in our doctrine, and in our worship yeah. that rightly belongs to the one most high God, Amen. his Father, and ours. Amen. Amen. And so I want people to see the Father. Jesus said it's a worship issue. In John chapter 4, he said to the woman at the well, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers, how I many want to be true worshipers? will worship the Father. Jesus had said to her, we know what we worship. So Jesus is a worshiper of the Father as well. Amen. He said to Mary in John uh, 20, 17 at the tomb, go tell my brethren that I'm going to ascend to my Father and your Father. That's right. To my God and your God. So the God, our God is also the God of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But I want people to clearly see Jesus' Father and our Father. <clears throat> our Father God is a person. That's right. There's, I have this written out and I have several scriptures to prove it. Who has a will. Several scriptures. Who has a personality. Zephaniah 3.17. Has a shape. Several scriptures. Has a face. I have scriptures for all of this. I can share it with you. He has a head. He has hair. He has eyes. He has ears. He has a mouth. He has breath. Psalm 33 and 6 said, that By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Word of God were the heavens made. And the inhabitants thereof by the breath of his mouth. So the word of God is not some pre existent being that entered into Mary's womb and came forth appearing like a baby. The word of God is the breath of God's mouth. Mm -hmm. Peter said this, they're willingly ignorant of that the heavens and the earth of old, the earth standing in the water and out of the water by the word of God. That's not somebody, that's the breath of God's mouth. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. God said something. In the beginning, God said. So anyway, we won't take a lot of time with that, but that's a biblical fact. God has breath. He has a voice. He has hands. He has back parts. He has feet. He loves, laughs, sings, walks, stands, sits, feels. He is not any way human, but he has a heavenly body as do angels. So we don't be... Don't be uh, thrown aside by the verses in the Bible that speak of God's wings because the nations of Assyria and Moab are also spoken of as having wings. And the Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, is prophesied in Malachi 4 and 2 that he will arise with healing in his wings. We know Jesus didn't literally have wings. And so this is speaking figuratively of Jesus as well as the Father. But he does have these attributes. He's real. And I'm glad I found him. Amen. I did not know the Father. I'm sorry to say I did not know the Father. In my doctrine, we preach Jesus to the exclusion of the Father. The apostles did not do that. They preach the Father. Everything from the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. That word is used over and over. Through or by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Here's one for you. Paul says in Philippians 4.19 But my God 
Do you think Paul knew who his God was? Amen. Hey, this is a good verse to use when you're talking to oneness of Trinitarian friends. Do it in love. Do it with patience. Because it's not easy. Nobody's going to get it in one day. Nobody's going to get it in one hour. Maybe not even in a week. It's like seed. It'll grow. But I've seen seed grow through asphalt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're Amen. seeing it all the time. Seed has life. Seed has power. Yeah. I've seen seed grow through cracks of concrete out here in your yeah. parking lot, right? So God put life in seed. So just sow a little seed, and if you get a chance, water it. If not, God will some, send somebody else to water it. But thank God he's the one that gives the increase. Amen. 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 And so we can help people to see uh, this truth of God. And that's one reason we're here. We want to encourage you to see this truth. I didn't come to it easy. If the doctrine of the incarnation on which oneness belief is based or the doctrine of the Trinity, if they're not biblical doctrines, since everything in the world originated somewhere, Whose mind, where, where did this originate? If the Bible clearly declares that God is one, Jesus said it, Mark 12, 29, listen Israel, S-H-E-M-A, which is listen in Hebrew. You won't find Jesus saying that word too many times, but he said listen. Hear, O oh, listen, Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. God is one Lord. Amen. If you see two Lords in a verse, only one of them can be God. That's right. Jesus' half-brother Jude himself said in verse 4 of Jude that in the last days they would be denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. There's two lords in that verse. <coughs> One, two. Yeah. How many count that high? I, I know you. Gotcha. Just have a little, you can smile right there. <laughs> There's two lords in that verse. Only one of them can be God. Amen. The other one is the supernaturally conceived, virgin born, sinless Son of God, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hero, champion, soon coming king preordained, destined ruler of this planet for 1,000 years. Yes. But Paul said at the end of the 1,000 years, when the end of the 1,000 the, the years are finished, the Lord Jesus is going to deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father. Amen. That's right. And then shall the Son himself be subject, hupotasso, beneath, in an inferior position to the Father Amen. forever. Yeah. Amen. I think it behooves us to get us there and get him there in our doctrine right now. Amen. 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 Because to do anything else is to take glory away from God. From God the Father. Amen. You see, in Greek, and with the New Testament, I'm sure not all of it was written in Greek, but it's been given to us in Greek, and the word doxa, D-O-X-A, is glory. Our English word glory, and it means to recognize a person for who they are and give them the honor and glory of who they are. That's the word doxa, which is glory. So to give God the glory that he's demanded and deserved, we must recognize who he is. Hear the cry of God the Father's heart. In Malachi 1.6, he says, A son honors his father, and a servant honors his master. If I then be a father, where is my honor, saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, mm -hmm. Folks, I can about weep over that. Yeah. When I saw this, I developed an empathy for God. And I, I find myself weeping over God. Yeah, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I weep over Him. 
When I get to thinking about his sacrifice on the cross, unspeakable suffering and pain that he went through as a man, felt every lash of the whip, felt every thorn on his brow. I can weep over that. But I also sense the pain of God the Father's heart for John 3.16 said, God so loved the world that he gave. We forget his part in Calvary. We made Calvary a display of the Son's love, but John 3.16 said it's a display of God the Father's love. Y'all pardon me. <laughs> That's all right. Amen. Amen. We must recognize what God the Father has done That's right. and give Him the honor and glory and thanksgiving that He deserves. Now, so if it didn't come from the Bible, Trinitarian and Oneness doctrines. The next question is, where did it come from? Professor Shirley C. Guthrie, Jr. wrote a book called Christian Doctrine. And in it he says, he's a fundamentalist, the Bible does not teach the doctrine of the Trinity. I said, what? <laughs> Page 76. He says, the language of the doctrine is the language of the ancient church taken from classical Greek philosophy. Right. Yep. I said, well, again, <laughs> that's on page 77. Then he says on page 80, the doctrine of the Trinity is not found in the Bible. Yep. Could he say it any plainer than that? Oh, no. Okay, Roger Olson and Christopher Hall wrote a book called The Trinity. They're Trinitarian scholars. I love to quote Trinitarian scholars speaking against the doctrine of the Trinity. <laughs> I think I'll write a book called Trinitarians Against the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> I could write a thick book on it because God makes them tell it. Amen. That's right. I don't believe they want to say it. No. I believe when they take pen in hand, God makes them say it. Because right. he knows Joel and Dan and Jeff's going to come along and quote them and help people see that these doctrines are not biblical doctrines. That's right. Amen. That's right. Here's what they say. The medieval mind of the Latin West made little distinction between philosophy and theology. That's Greek philosophy. Listen to this. Scripture, Plato, Aristotle, and subtle logic played significant, if not equal, roles in developing explanation and defenses of doctrines such as the Trinity and the person of Christ. Do you hear what these Trinitarian scholars are saying? Yeah. They're saying Scripture, Plato, Aristotle, and human reasoning all played perhaps equal roles in deciding the doctrine of the Trinity. Well, I understand Scripture but what does Plato and Aristotle and human logic have to do with who God is? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he says, Augustine, that's St. Augustine as he's called, the darling of the church, was influenced by Platonic, that's Plato, Platonic thought, which inclined his Trinitarian views in the direction of the unity of the Godhead. Page 55. They say, the philosophy of Plato and Aristotle both found expression in Thomas Aquinas' system of theology. They refer in their book to Greek Trinitarian doctrine and Greek Trinitarian thought. I don't know what that does to you, but I find that shocking. Because I don't know what Plato and Aristotle have to do with anything about what you and I believe. I've never had an interest in these guys. If they taught about them in Balcomville, it went right over my head. <laughs> I was never interested in Greek philosophy. 
I was never interested in Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and all these guys. I had zero interest in them. But when their names kept reoccurring in the writings of Trinitarian scholars and giving them credit for the doctrine of the Trinity, I had to find out a little bit about who these fellows are. What I found wasn't good. Again, Trinitarian Millard Erickson, Southern Baptist scholar, writes, he referred to Adolf Harnack in the 19th century, a historian, finds the Christian community borrowing heavily from Greek philosophy. Hello? Mercy. <laughs> Shame. It was from these foreign sources. This is the true source. Amen. That's right. It's the only one. Hello? That's right. That's right. right. right here. That's right. There it is. It was from these foreign sources, not from Jesus himself, that the doctrine of the Trinity, incarnation, and related conceptions grow. I love this man. I've never met him. I pray for him. I wouldn't take a thousand dollars for his book. <laughs> I highly recommend it in opposition to the doctor of the Trinity because he's so honest about it. Did you hear that statement? It was from these foreign sources, Greek philosophy, not from Jesus himself. Folks, we ought to be able to close the book right amen. there. That's right. Yes, amen. That's it. Amen. These foreign sources, not from Jesus himself, that the doctrine of the Trinity, the incarnation, and related conceptions grow. Wow. Wow. Everybody say wow. Wow. He goes on. Brother Erickson, we have also observed that the specific metaphysical vehicle used to express the cl classic doctrine of the Trinity was a Greek, not a Hebrew. How many know that Jesus was a Hebrew? That's right. How many knew Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were Hebrew? Amen. How many know Peter, Paul, John were Hebrew? Hebrew. Hebrew? What do these Greeks have to do with it? <laughs> All right, it was a the classical doctrine of the Trinity was a Greek metaphysics that was viable in that time but no longer makes a great deal of sense to most people today. Oh, I like it. I like it. Hallelujah. That's right. Wow. Listen to this. Page 259. This is in his book, God in Three Persons. I highly recommend it. He says, how in the world he can wind up a Trinitarian after all of that? <laughs> a Southern Baptist theologian. Mm -hmm. And I love him. I honor him. I don't mean to dishonor him in any way. But it doesn't bother theologians that it's not in the Bible. It bothers me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it ain't fair. It doesn't bother some theologians that it came from Plato and Aristotle and Socrates and Philo and these others. But it bothers me because I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. right. They said a guy was walking through an old cemetery and he saw an inscription on a tomb. It says where it said, where you are, I once was. Amen. And where I am, you shall be. So prepare to follow me. Amen. Somebody had penciled in on the stone, to follow you, I'm not content until I see which way you went. <laughs> Folks, I am not a follower of Plato. Amen. Amen. While it is customary to assume that the major philosophical influence on the Greek fathers was Plato, I'm talking early church fathers after the death of the apostles. This Trinitarian scholar says, while it is customary to assume that the major philosophical influence on the Greek 
Fathers was Plato and the Stoics, more followers of Plato. Writer Michael Durant believes the influence of Aristotle should not be overlooked. Why, we wouldn't want to leave out Aristotle. No, no, no. 